Hi, I'm Linda and this is No Frills ASMR. I just finished eating lunch and I was thinking about how many of the items in my refrigerator <laughs> come from Trader Joe's. And I thought I'd share some of the, it's basically hot sauces and condiments. Yeah, I think so. Um, so I thought I'd share them to you. I have a, a Trader Joe's pretty close to my house and they have a super fast checkout. So I tend to, you know, run in and run out of there instead of going to a grocery store at this point. Um, the first time I ever went there, I kind of thought, well, they don't have all the usual stuff I buy. But once you become accustomed to their items and you try stuff, you really get to like it. <laughs> so I guess, you know, I am a uh, trader who, uh, <laughs> not trader hoes. <laughs> I'm a tr wait, yeah, I'm a trader Joe's person. I like it. <clears throat> anyway, so first let me move it. This is the bag I use usually when I go there because they do give you paper bags, but they always double bag the paper bag, which just make a better bag. <laughs> but I don't, I don't really have a need for those. So I try to remember to bring my own bag. Um, anyway, and these are great bags, by the way, you can make them super small and pop them in your pocket and they stretch. I forget the name though. I'll look it up. Oh, here it is. What is this called? Calypso Studios. I don't know. Anyway. All right. Let me move this out. First, I'll show you, where should I put it over here, what I had for lunch today. Um, okay, I want to try to do this without making too much clinky, clinky noise. So this is Trader Joe's Sockeye Salmon. It's wild caught Pacific salmon. And a lot of you know that I'm, uh, you know, trying to do what I can to keep any kind of dementia at bay. <laughs> and eating salmon is supposed to be very good for your brain. But I am not a huge fish eater. Really? I mean, it's okay. If you put enough stuff on it, it's okay. <laughs> or if you have a really good piece of fish, which, yeah. But most of the salmon they sell at stores is Atlantic salmon and that's really not the best salmon as far as health goes and sockeye salmon is supposed to be good so I buy this canned stuff and then I have to doctor it up to make it so that I want to eat it <laughs> so what I do is take this out I us usually use about half a can and the first thing I'll do is add a little bit of like apple cider vinegar to it and kind of mash it up and then I put some of this crunchy chili onion and we'll talk about this more because this is this is a staple in my kitchen <laughs> but I put some of this in with the salmon and And this, oh boy, I don't know how to say this, furikake, maybe? Norikomi, I don't want to say it wrong, but I think it's, you know, furikake, Japanese multi-purpose seasoning. So I sprinkle some of this with the crunchy chili onion and the salmon, mix it up. And this part of it doesn't come from, it's a little crinkly, from Trader Joe's. But um, Trader Joe's does not have a very good kind of like healthy little cracker that I like. They have some that have too big a seeds. I just don't like them. But so I get these at a like, different grocery store and they're by Wasa and they're called light rye crisp bread. And these are good because one thing they say that can help you know, your health and 
and keeping dementia at bay is having enough fiber in your diet so that you have good, um, and I'm not a health expert. <laughs> I'm just telling you what I do because I've read it, um, to have enough good gut bacteria and having a healthy gut bacteria is good for your body and your brain. <clears throat> so these ones have four grams of fiber per two crisps and they're pretty big and they only have 40 calories. So 20 calories per crisp. And it's got two grams of soluble and two grams of insoluble. So I'm like, I didn't even eat a full two today. I broke one and a half, but they're as large as this package. I mean, they're pretty good size. So 20 calories each and they don't have a ton of flavor. I mean, I like them. I think they're good, but once you put this salmon on there, it's pretty yummy. So I put that with this mix up and then I buy actually at Trader Joe's usually they have a little in the refrigerator by the salad greens, little sprouts and it's like broccoli sprouts. And I don't even remember a bunch of healthy, but they're little tiny sprouts. So I buy those and put them on top of my salmon thing and eat that. And that's a pretty good lunch. And you know, like this crisp bread and at the grocery, I think it's like, it's not cheap. It's like $4, but you get quite a few, maybe $5. I don't know. And then I think the salmon's probably, I don't remember, $2. And this might be $4. I think I should have gotten. And then, I don't know, this might be $3. So that makes you lunches for a whole, well, you'd need a couple cans. Like, assuming you do a half can each day, you know, that's not too bad for a bunch of lunches if you're on a budget and you want healthy food. And then the greens, you could get any kind of greens. You could get arugula, or spinach, just to have, oh, I know what else I put in here. If I happen to have either a red onion or a shallot, I'll chop that up pretty fine and put it in there too. So anyway, that's a good healthy lunch. Okay. But I will talk to you. Okay. So this one is the crunchy chili onion. And the ingredients are olive oil, dried onion, dried garlic, dried red bell peppers, red chili pepper flakes, sea salt, and paprika. It says grate with your favorite protein or drizzled over pasta. Dip in crusty bread. Oh yeah, that'd be good. For a subtly smoky and spicy experience. Um, oh gosh, it smells good. <laughs> it's like sticking right there. Those are the chunks of red pepper and garlic and onion. Um, and then it's like this oil, but you mix it up. It's tasty. <laughs> so a lot of times, like if I make vegetables, um, or chicken, I'll just put a little bit in and kind of mix it around on, on it at the end. Or I put it in, sometimes I'll put it in marinara to make it just have a little punch. <laughs> I put it in everything. Yeah, I like it. I highly recommend this. I saw in the store the other day, they have one, it's a similar jar, but it said something like crunchy, I think it was orange peel. I don't know. It didn't tempt me as much, but maybe I'll try it. Now this is, um, well, I'll read you the ingredients. White sesame seeds, black sesame seeds, nori, which is black seaweed, salt, and kelp powder. It says sprinkle on rice, eggs, ramen, fish, popcorn, and or any food you choose. I don't know if I'd do all that with it personally but I definitely like it in my salmon. It makes me think of, um, uh, like a spicy salmon roll from a, um, sushi restaurant. See how it's little pieces of like seaweed and then the black sesame and the regular sesame. It doesn't smell like much, but part of why I like to eat this, I've heard 
that the seaweed, you know, it has iodine and other things that might be good for you and for your brain. So I mix this in. So I have that, you know, most days for lunch. I don't have this every day. Sometimes I'll do a smoothie. I mix it up. But a lot of days. So yeah, I recommend that as a nice little lunch. Um, oh, one thing with this chili onion. This isn't a condiment, but I kind of wanted to show it to you because it's so good for you. I cook at home almost every meal. I'm trying to do this quietly. Um, so I do try to make it healthy, but I also want it to taste yummy. <laughs> but one thing I make a lot is this is called 10 minute farro, farro. And I only just started buying this, I don't know, maybe six months ago. And I'm obsessed. <laughs> you put the whole thing, I take the whole thing and put it in water so it's plenty deep and just boil it for like 10 minutes and then drain it. So it's not like rice where you have to, you know, you just boil it in a ton of water till it's soft and then drain it. And it's a grain and it has two grams of fiber. Um, and five grams of protein. So that's kind of nice. So you bring a large pot of water to boil, add the bag, boil 10 to 12 minutes to drain and season to taste. So I make this up and I make probably two bags a week maybe. And then I separate out, I drain it and put half into a container in the fridge to use another day. And then I take one half and I take a bunch of chopped veggies and actually at Trader Joe's they have chopped veggies that are cauliflower, peppers, onions, carrots, corn I think mm. and it's all pre-chopped and sometimes for convenience I'll buy that but other times I'll just chop some onion and asparagus and whatever veg I have in the fridge into small pieces and I'll cook that up till it's kind of soft and then add a giant scoop of this and mix that up with some you know, that's all cooking with olive oil. And then I'll put the farro in and cook it up. Yum. And then if I have an avocado, I'll take like half an avocado and put it on top. And that will fill you up for the day. And I call this <laughs> nature's ozempic. Because if you eat this like every day, like a half a bag, not a half bag, probably a quarter of a bag, um, it fills you up. <laughs> and you know, it kind of helps keep your blood sugar from going up and down. So I recommend that. And I don't even put a protein with it. I just do this with a veg and a bunch of this to make it taste delicious. And then an avocado. And that's, I mean, you could put chicken or salmon or whatever, but that's just the lunch or breakfast, really. I kind of skip breakfast. I just do a, uh, like, 11 o'clock lunch slash... <laughs> I guess. All right. What do we have here? Oh, this, my kids, my boys love this. I think I had it the one time and I was like, eh, I don't know if it's my favorite, but I don't remember why, but I buy this a lot and they eat it. They seem to go through it. Um, this is Trader Joe's chunky garlic jalapeno hot sauce. And the ingredients are brined jalapeno pepper puree water, seasoning, dried minced garlic, olive oil, and sanapin gum. Found in almost any diner or cafe along the California Central Coast, this hot sauce is made in Gilroy, the garlic capital of the year, well, <laughs> the year of the world. This has a base of jalapeno puree and minced garlic with the perfect level of heat, making it an excellent addition to potatoes, eggs, tacos or any dish that needs a boost of flavor. Yeah, I think my boys make scrambled eggs and then dump this all on top. Okay, wait a minute. I want to say it smells like vinegar, but there's no vinegar. Wait. That's funny. There's no vinegar in the um, recipe there. Recipe. Ingredients. 
psychic. It's something. Garlic. It's funny. There is no vinegar. I swear I'm tasting. <coughs> Excuse me. It says in the jalapeno puree, jalapeno pepper, salt, acetic acid. What is that? Because is that lemon? It tastes kind of like lemon. <coughs> That's pretty good. I don't know why I thought I didn't like it. It's good. I could totally, if you made scrambled eggs and loaded that on top, that'd be real good. Okay, here's another one my boys like. I don't, <laughs> you can tell they've been squeezed trying to get it out. I think it hardened up, but it's called spicy honey sauce. Um, I don't know. I get, I get the attraction. <laughs> Boy, this really did harden up. Look at that. But I don't know. It doesn't, it's honey, distilled white vinegar, natural flavors, including chili extract. Um, my boys will take this and actually squeeze it onto pizza. <sighs> this is crystallized for sure. You know, it's fine for honey to crystallize. You just put it in hot water and it'll take the crystallization off. Um, it's hot. Yeah, definitely has a kick. It's okay. I just don't have an idea of what I want to do with it, I guess. But they do, I guess, because it's gone. All right, what else do we have in here? This one, the label came off. This is Trader Joe's Korean. It's called like... <laughs> I'm going to get this wrong, so if any Korean people watch, and I want to say it was something I wasn't familiar with, so is it, <laughs> I'm like embarrassed, Gung, Gung Che or Gung Chao or something, it's like a fermented chili paste, I think, um, I've tried to use it a few different ways. And what I find I'm most successful using this with is, well, actually, I think I have something else here. I sometimes will make a, um, a miso broth. I do like this white miso paste they have. You can just put this in boiling water and drink it, and it's very yummy. And miso is a fermented soybean paste. Yeah, this has white miso, which is water, rice, and soybean salt, water, and salt. Um... And if you can take this and add like a little tofu and green onion, <clears throat> and that's a nice little soup. But sometimes what I do is take a, like a whole thing of this miso, and I'll add a little bit of this, and then tons of vegetables, and then put in at Trader's, they sell these big, thick, I don't know what they call them, if they're ramen noodles, but they're thick. And they're kind of soft in the package. And I put those in there. And that's really good. But, um, I don't know. I tried putting this on egg. But for me, it wasn't. You know what it is? Let me, let me. <laughs> Do you know the sauce? And I'm going to say this name wrong. Worcestershire sauce? Worcestershire sauce. How do you say it? <laughs> it smells a little like that. Which I think it's the anchovy in Worcestershire sauce, but in here it's probably like a fish paste. So it has, and I don't know about that, I could be totally wrong, but it has like a funk, which is good. I mean, I'm not saying funk is bad, but it's that kind of, you wouldn't want too much in one bite. <laughs> I think it's something you want kind of spread out. Does that make sense? It's just got a little funkiness to it. So you have to you know, like if you made a pad thai and how you put a little bit of fish sauce, you could probably put a little of this. All right, that's, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about that one. I also have a paste they sell on a, anyway, whatever. Okay. I'll show you the other one I don't love, and then we'll go into all the really ones I love the most. So this, they make a, um, a sweet chili sauce, you know, the red one, like they have in... Chinese restaurants that you can put on an egg roll and that's really good I bought this Thai sweet ginger sauce it's not my favorite um, it's super heavy on the ginger and I like ginger 
but I just, I don't quite know what to do with this, really. It's too sweet for me, I think. Um, it says water, coconut sugar, so that's the second ingredient, so it's pretty sweet. Pickled garlic, water, salt, distilled vinegar, ginger, garlic. It's got a lot of ingredients. Um, it smells like, it's so familiar. I could probably make a salad dressing with it. It's like sweet, sweet, sweet ginger with some garlic. That's what it smells like. It's okay. It's not my favorite. It's been sitting in my fridge for a long time. And I just don't know what to do with it. So I don't know. All right. Now let's go to things I love. <laughs> Actually, one more thing I don't. Okay. This is their hummus, which is gone. <laughs> eaten it um but in general if trader joe's listens to this mr joe you gotta up the hummus game over there i don't really like any of trader joe's hummus um i like sabra hummus and i make my own hummus i feel like almost all their hummus is just not that good this crunchy chili onion is basically hummus with a scoop of this on top and it's okay just because the crunchy onion covers the blandness of the, of the hummus. So, I don't really recommend Trader Joe's hummus. Having said that, what I do get at Trader Joe's, oh, come on, don't make a loud noise, is I buy these organic garbanzo beans and then this organic tahini and okay so if you take garbanzo beans tahini some olive oil and salt and basically blend them until they're smooth you have hummus that's basic hummus um if you want it to be like extra smooth you can take the garbanzo beans there are a few ways to do but I've made a lot of them. <laughs> you can boil them in a pot of water and you boil them until all the little shells come off the beans <laughs> and they'll like float to the top and then you kind of skim off all those shells and then just put the beans in like a food processor with a big old scoop of tahini and olive oil and kind of do it slowly, you know, put a little more in until you have it just how you like it. So that, I make my own hummus, and you can make a ton of hummus. And then I try to cut up a ton of, like, orange peppers, cauliflower. I even take baby carrots and cut them into quarters, because <laughs> they're more edible for me. Um, and what else do I put in there? Cauliflower. Hmm, that's all I can think of. But anyway, and then dip it in the hummus. And that's yummy. Or sometimes I'll cut them up small enough. I'll take a crisp bread and put hummus on top and then put all the veggies on there. And then if I have some of the other, the sweet chili sauce, I'll pour that on it and eat it. <laughs> oh, that was pretty yummy. Okay, but I'll show you the other thing I make that goes with hummus. Let me move these out here. Okay, this is a good one too. What, what you can do... That's yummy. <laughs> they sell these called Italian Bomba Hot Pepper Sauce. Fermented crushed Calabrian chili peppers. And the ingredients on this is chili peppers, sunflower seed oil, extra virgin olive oil, dried basil, salt, and ascorbic acid and citric acid to preserve it. And look at that. It's like oil with a bunch of Oh man, this smells good. <laughs> okay, so I take like basically a whole jar of these sun dried tomatoes in olive oil, and these are like sweet on their own. The ingredients of these sun dried Roma tomatoes, pure olive oil, herbs, spices, and sulfur dioxide. No artificial colors. Well, okay. But anyway, I take these 
and put them in my food processor, which mine, I had a mini one and it broke. So I've been using my immersion blender, <laughs> which seems far away. So I put these in there and then even though there's oil in here, I think I drain it because I don't like their oil taste. I think. But anyway, I put like good quality olive oil and a big scoop of that and blend it. And then <laughs> you can take your hummus like on a cracker, put the hummus and then put a smear of this on there. Oh, that's yummy. I'm going to make that today. Oh, and maybe I'll put a little balsamic vinegar in there. Just something to give it a little, you know, acid. Yeah, that's good. This is tasty. I recommend you mix these up. Because <laughs> in this, you can put like a scoop of in your pasta sauce, the Italian bomba, and it will like spice it up. And you can take the sun-dried tomatoes and kind of cut them into smaller pieces and put them in the pasta. So... That's always nice. Um, do they say anything about what to do with it? Nope. They do not. Okay. Speaking of balsamic, this Trader Joe's sells, and actually Aldi has a version of this, and I think most grocery stores do, but it's called uh, balsamic glaze. And what it is is sort of a, um, I think they kind of cook down balsamic vinegar with sugar, so it becomes like... It says balsamic vinegar, cons oh, wait, why am I having trouble reading this? Balsamic vinegar concentrated, cooked grape must. Oh, it doesn't have sugar, so it just gets sweet by being cooked down? Well, that's even better. Trader, <sighs> I'm going to say the name wrong, G-I-O-T-T-O, -T -T -O. I know I have an Italian person who Giados, 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 Giodos. Let's go with Giodos. Giodos? <laughs> Do you say G I like <sighs> Giodos? I should know that. Anyway, all right. Trader Giodos glaze is made in Moderna, Italy, home of some of the world's best balsamic vinegar of Modena. I'm sorry, not I said. Did I say Modena? Anyway. Because it is produced using selected ingredients, it retains the distinctive flavor and aroma of balsamic balsamic vinegar of Modena. What's I can read, it's just small in my eyes. <laughs> What's different is the consistency. Our glaze is thick enough to be perfectly suited to dressing plates for special occasions. It is also a great basting sauce for meat, poultry, and fish and can be used as a dessert topping for a completely new, interesting taste. Um, I think I actually like all these balsamic glaze better than this one, although maybe they really taste the same. Maybe that's my imagination. Let me just give you a little taste here. Um, that is good. <laughs> that's tasty. So I use this like at night. <laughs> This is weird, but after dinner, I get snacky, and so I make myself a giant salad, like with mixed greens, and if I have any veg, and then I like drizzle this on, and maybe some olive oil and salt and pepper, and it's delicious for that. You could take fresh mozzarella and fresh tomato, and if you have fresh basil, and then drizzle it on, and just make like a salad and eat it. Um, I actually... <laughs> get make like a nice real thin crust pizza and then I take arugula and put it on top and drizzle this on top of the whole thing and eat it that's yummy uh sometimes I'll get ricotta cheese ricotta and um put it like on a you know a crostini or some kind of crunchy and then drizzle this on top maybe even with a little sun-dried tomato Actually, with the ricotta cheese, I did have this on that one time, and that was pretty good. I like that. Um, yeah, this has a ton of... Oh, and yeah, and if you just make like a grilled chicken, you can drizzle it on that. This is just a good all-purpose. And if you want it to be pretty, 
like if you're serving pretty, you can go back and forth on the plate underneath and then put the chicken on top. And it looks fancy, like a fancy restaurant. Okay. This one um, is Trader Joe's red pepper spread with eggplant and garlic. I, there is a, um, ooh, it's dripping. Oh, no. <laughs> Hold on, I have a towel here. There is a, mm, like, Middle Eastern grocery store near me where I usually buy this sort of product. It's the same thing, but they give it to you, like, you get a jar, like, that big for like six dollars and it's actually better than this but my son wanted some for his sandwiches he takes to work and I happen to be at Trader Joe's so I picked this up and it's fine it's good I mean it, I like the other one I get but part of that's because the other one's so much cheaper and it's still yummy but this is good um so what this is is sweet red peppers eggplant cane sugar, sunflower oil, sea salt, dried garlic, and caps, capsinthin, is that you say? Cap, that's red pepper, right? I don't remember this being spicy particularly. No. No, it's mostly sweet. Actually, at the Middle Eastern store, I think they have the sweet and spicy. You can buy it either way. But I usually get the not spicy and then just I have so many hot sauces you can add to it but I use this um, sometimes with hummus oh when I make that I was telling you you blend these things together if you want it not as spicy you can use a bunch of this in there that's nice but if you're making like a a yummy sandwich you can get like a good you know whole grain bread or sourdough bread toast it up spread a good layer of this on there and then put a bunch of you know grilled veggies or even you can throw veggies in your oven and just roast them and then put that on maybe if you want some spice you could put a layer of that and nosh away that's yummy so yeah I am I recommend that all right what else is in Okay, do we want to do all hot sauces or should I show you? I'll show you this real quick. So this one is their chimichurri sauce. And the other night I made on my grill, even though it's freezing cold, so I have to run the grill. It takes a while. But I get a whole chicken. And you, have you ever heard of beer can chicken? <laughs> it's like that, but I don't waste beer because I'm not stupid. <laughs> so I take an old can and... Uh, you know and clean it off and fill it with just water and then put like a little vinegar and I put a little bit of this peri peri sauce in the can <laughs> and then you put your chicken on top of the can and it sits like upright in your grill and you just grill it for like an hour maybe longer because it was really cold out and then the water steams the chicken kind of from inside so it's super moist and if you have a little like hot in there sometimes that'll get a little dribbly like it's once I'm done I'll dump that can on top so it flavors it <laughs> you guys it's so good I coat it with seasoning beforehand it's delicious and then I cut it all up and put it on a board you know just all cut chicken pieces and everybody just digs in but <clears throat> this chimichurri sauce is good so if you don't feel like making a chimichurri because it's pretty simple to make but if you don't have the fresh herbs you have to buy all the herbs separately it's kind of a pain <clears throat> so this I recommend <laughs> it is cilantro oh yeah you have to like cilantro olive oil <clears throat> excuse me parsley canola oil water garlic red wine sea salt, cumin, and crushed red pepper. This on chickens, delicious. Love it. Like you can see, we ate almost the whole thing the other night. Um, and then my son really likes this tzatziki, creamy garlic cucumber dip. So he ate that. He ate almost all of it on his chicken. <laughs> I think he was wrapping it in pita. Um, but yeah, this is good. It's This one's a yogurt base. So it's kind of nice. It's kind of like a um, 
Yeah, it tastes like garlic and cucumber. Um, I used to make, just, I haven't made it in a long time, but in the summer when I have fresh herbs, I make that. Uh, it's good. And if you buy their like non bread or their pita and put this on there and then some meat and some onions, it's good. Okay, uh, back to this peri peri sauce. This is pretty spicy, um, but we love it. I buy it pretty often. It says peri peri sauce with fermented and dried chilies, a condiment with rich, complex heat. Uh, it says lemon juice. Yeah, I would say this one has a lemon juice. Let me smell. Oh, it smells nice. Lemon juice, water, fermented chilies, sunflower oil, garlic salt, and dried chili flakes. Let's take a little taste of that. Yeah, this one's spicy. Sometimes I'll do a chicken, I'll take a whole bottle of this and dump it, <laughs> save a little bit for later, but it is spicy. Like right now my, my mouth's going, Wah. <laughs> but I like it. It's spicy, but it still has a lot of flavor. You know how some things just are spicy, but I would call that in one of the more spicy, like this is probably a, a low to medium spice this is a medium i would say for sure i will say they do i'll show you what's spicy this one trader joe's habanero hot sauce i use this all the time water habanero peppers distilled white vinegar onion cane sugar sunflower salt sunflower oil salt garlic and xanthan gum um i like this because it is it, for me personally, it's like knock your socks off hot. Like you can only use a drip <laughs> for me. I know a lot of people can tolerate a lot more spice, but I find it very spicy, but I love it. <laughs> I, um, I put it, you know, I'll put a drip into, it's great for like chili. If you just want to knock that chili spice up, but also I'll just put it in whatever I'm eating and mix it in. I like spice. I like to be kind of blown out with spice sometimes <laughs> um but like this one my husband cannot eat it he thinks it's way too spicy so it depends on your but i would say this is the hottest this is you know semi-hot if i had this open i'd taste it but i don't but i will show you the new one that i bought that my whole family we all agreed is this. It is called Trader Joe's shake it up a little bit, Green Dragon Hot Sauce. And it says water, jalapeno, peppers, tomatilla puree, white distilled vinegar, cane sugar, um, cilantro puree, salt, garlic puree, garlic, spinach powder, lime juice, habanero pepper powder. Um, let me remember what it smells like. Oh, it's good. <laughs> it's really like, I'll take a little, it's really like green. Um, like it sort of has an herbaceousness, but it also has a little heat, but it's not, I wouldn't call it spicy. Um, it's a nice amount of spice. I'd call it medium mild. Not too bad. Sorry if you don't like it. Okay. So uh, this is the spiciest. I would say that's second spiciest. <laughs> um, I don't recall whether that one's spicy. I have a lot of spicy. Apparently I like spicy stuff. So. Green Dragon's probably the least spicy. Um, maybe this one isn't too spicy. This one's got a little heat, but not a ton. This one, I just took a taste and I actually, it's sweet and spicy. This one's pretty spicy, but I mix it in with other things. I don't recall this and I don't feel like tasting it 
because it's so funky <laughs> on its own. I think it's pretty spicy. I don't remember. This peri peri is pretty spicy. It's getting up there. And then this, I think, might be the spiciest thing Trader Joe's has. Um, but it still has good flavor. It's not, it's not so spicy that you're like, I can't taste anything. But I think if I were doing hot ones, that's how I would rate them. <laughs> anyway, all right, guys. Well, I hope you enjoyed that. I could come back and do <laughs> uh, frozen foods from Trader Joe's, spices, cooking supplies, um, oh, potato chips, <laughs> or chips in general, uh, maybe desserts, but I don't really, I'm not a dessert person. I haven't found a dessert at Trader Joe's I think is all that great, actually. I mean, they're okay. My boys like the frozen bananas that are covered in chocolate. <laughs> I like gummy toe.